It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to Dialogues with Dan. I'm Dan Winheim. I have another live interview for you all. Tonight, I'm joined by Marnie Schwartz Greenwald. I'd like to introduce Marnie Greenwald. Hello, Marnie. Hi. Glad you could join us. Thank you so on much. Dialogues I with appreciate Dan. it. Oh, you're welcome. Well, everyone, tonight's interview is, I think, Marnie will, it's about Marnie's book, which is entitled Lemon. Maybe we could start by Marnie telling us what does lemon mean to you? Well, my daughter, Sierra is her name. She actually eats a lot of lemons um, since she's very young. And the cover of my book has her holding up half of a lemon. So, and yellow actually is her favorite color. Um, so I think of lemons as um, a nutritious fruit. And the book is really about a holistic practices in helping um, to heal my daughter. Um, she has autoimmune-induced autism and pans and dyspraxia. And I'm always thrilled when she eats a lemon to provide good sustenance for her. Excellent. Well, you know how lemon, people might think of lemon as being not good. You know, the, you buy a car, you say, oh, I bought a lemon. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's not what you have in mind at all. No. I mean, lemon right. is the opposite. I mean, your daughter is... You don't look at her as a lemon. Maybe you could talk a little about the greatness in your daughter's life. And mm -hmm. in this case, lemon isn't bad, but is a very good thing. And you're raising her with greatness. Could you speak about that? Um, I'd like to think I'm raising her with greatness. <laughs> you know... Sometimes I fall, there's hard days. Um, the normalcy of our life isn't what I thought it would be. Um, sometimes I have to wake up in the middle of the night and um, she might have to be changed. Um, sometimes it's early in the morning. And um, if I ask her to put her clothes on, sometimes she, she can, but her shirt might be backwards tag might be in the front. Um, you know, I always show her bottoms up with the picture in the front. Um, so it's a lot of um, staying present with her, but also knowing when to move forward and pull back in guiding her to learn concepts. So um, it's a challenge, yes. but um, she's doing, I would say she's progressing. Um, there's easier days and harder days. Um, but it's not um, like just saying, come on, Sierra, get your clothes on, come downstairs, eat breakfast, and put your shoes on, and let's go. Because it's not, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yes. not as simple as that. So, right. Yeah. And lem lemons are yellow, mm -hmm. like sunshine. That's right. So she's a ray of light. She is. Yes. That's exactly right. And I guess you could look at it that you're making, or both of you, Making lemonade. Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, she, she doesn't drink that much lemonade. She prefers no. a lemon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Maybe you could speak about your book, about how it starts, middle, and, sure. and what it covers. So I started my book more as a diary for me, um, kind of to help me cope through the difficulties of trying time. Um, 
Sierra, I, I could go back to old videos of her where I see her as uh, more neurotypical. Um, she was making her milestones. She was um, reaching for things. She was crawling on time. She rolled over on time. She was um, coordinated and she would dance using both sides of her body. Um, about the time she was um, 17 months old, um, the pediatrician said, you know, she's not pointing or saying, responding to my name. Um, and my whole stomach sank, my heart sank. And I remember getting that little piece of paper with the um, you know, early intervention and the developmental pediatrician's number. And I walked out of there and I went into my car and I talk about that in my book. Um, I put my foot on the, the brake and I, I just, I asked for a message or some kind of miracle. And as I put my foot on the gas, Sierra said the word milk. And um, it just touched me so much and it gave me hope, which we all need. Yeah, you're right. And milk, I wrote, because milk that one word. It's like sustenance. That's right. Right, so. Like lemon. Good things for the climate. <laughs> right. Right? Right, exactly. Yes, yeah. so what have you learned about hypoxia, hypoxia? What have you learned about it? Um, well, she has um, not only oral motor, oral motor hypoxia, which is in her face, it's in her entire body. So performing some movements, like if I would do open shut them or ask her to say hello with this movement, that would be difficult for her. She totally understands what you're saying. So if you would tell her, see her do this on command several times, she may get very upset. Mm -hmm. And I feel like these are the things that children with special needs face, especially if you have autism and you have apraxia and you cannot follow the command um, that someone is asking you to do. You might be aggressive, you might spit, you might <laughs> kick your feet, um, but those are all forms of communication. Um, and if you are an understanding person and you sit with her and other, her, I'll speak about her, and you ask her what's going on, are you okay? And you put her, your hand on her shoulder, you give her a warm hug, you know, she might start laughing and then Everything's okay. Yes. You know? So as far as what inspired you to write the book, you said you began it as a diary? Kind of. And yeah. where, where was the transition from diary to book, and why a book? Um, I felt compelled um, to be a voice for and to help support um, other parents um, that are going through the same thing or that may need support in navigating the healthcare and educational system. Um, I also wanted professionals to understand it from a, a mother's point of view mm -hmm. because often when you're a teacher in the classroom, you think if a child is fidgeting or not paying attention, that they're being defiant. And it's not really that they're being defiant, it's that they can't help themselves and regulate their bodies enough to conform to what you want. Yes. Yeah. So maybe you could share what, what's difficult for Sierra. You said some things. Are there yeah. other, like, does she, like, was she able to add or... Or. Sierra has trouble writing her name, so in order to know what she understands, you might have to do like a large-scale puzzle and put music on and tap on certain numbers or hand you a number with a picture on it, you know, and then jo um, connect with her and play, you know, use play as yes. a method for, for learning. Yeah. And how old is Sierra? She's nine and a half. Yes, and did she, has she been coloring? Does she know numbers? Sierra um, is wonderful with color um, in matching her outfits in the morning and picking the color socks to match her outfit. Um, 
She um, does a lot of large scale paintings. She would prefer using her fingers. So we often use her fingers and other mm -hmm. types of tools to help her express herself. We do collages. Um, and sometimes if she has OCD and she might have ripped up her book, we'll take those pictures and cut them and use them as a theme on a, of a collage. Right. Yes, yeah, so you touched on some of Sierra's learning mm -hmm. strategies or learning ability. Has she picked up strategies to help her live day-to-day -day life? Um, picked up strategies from me or teachers or? Either or. or both. Um, because she has a severe dyspraxia component, um, for her to perform daily activities can be hard. Um, I will tell you that uh, she had, I nursed her for a year, had no trouble latching on. Um, she um, can eat with a fork and a spoon. Whether she wants to do that is another story uh, because it's more fun for her. But um, she's very capable. Um, she, um, her, she still has trouble going to the bathroom on her own. Um, I'd say it's definitely getting better. Um, I get a lot of successes in school, but I also think she doesn't always feel the sensation. Um, so she does a lot of it by um, memory over the course of her day. Um, so I would say she's maybe 75% there. All right. Yes, and c could you mention how is she, I guess she, she worked with in other individuals or groups, people, like in therapy, um, or is it really you and her one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I spent a lot of time with Sierra, um, especially when she was younger, because I think it's really important for the mother-child bond from birth to age three. Um, developmentally um, and um, I even went to a, a, a mother uh, parent-child school um, when she was very little um, to help wean her into the whole process of going to school um, and um, I forgot your question <laughs> so so oh, I I'm guess, human oh. yeah. Yes, I forgot. Are. Yeah. So. Well, I guess I was asking about her ability with tools. Like I know you in the book. You wrote well, you about said that she spent a lot of time Einstein. with me. Oh. Baby Einstein. Oh, when she was very little. Yeah. Yes. I mean, people still ask me, "Have you tried sign language?" Well, we've been doing sign language since she is about six months to a year old but because she has a dyspraxia again it's hard for her to do sign language right yeah for so the motor planning part so it sounds physically yes she does have some detriment she can climb oh she yes, could go exactly. up up and down a slide yes she um she's very strong and she's very strong willed she is the strongest willed person that I have ever met. Oh. <laughs> so she, she tackles great things for mm, herself. She yeah. like her mother? She's stronger willed than me, yes. Are you strong willed? Um, I am more strong willed now because of her. Yes, yes. I, I would say yes. I'm more passionate mm. about if I'm passionate it brings out my, my will. And so Sierra has brought that out of me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Maybe you could share where some of her rehab took place. So we've done a lot of techniques with Sierra. Um, she has, uh, we've, from a health perspective and an educational perspective. Um, should I sit, start with health or education? Uh, yes, or I'd say. Um, from a health perspective, we've started out um, with chiropractic care. Um, we wouldn't go like every week, um, and he used a technique uh, called kinesiology, which is muscle testing. Um, a chiropractor actually shared with me that Sierra would just catch up, so that stayed with me. 
um, and it gave me more hope. Um, and he all, he had all good intentions in mind. Um, as the months passed, um, I noticed a decline in um, her. She had hypotonia, um, which is loss of muscle in her oh. in muscle tone in her body. Um, so he, it wasn't severe, but it was a, a great enough loss to have, hype, it's called hypotonia. Um, so we were doing chiropractic and then we also um, did um, some, we did speech therapy and occupational therapy. We had her on a horse at two years old. Um, it was called hippotherapy. And um, the movement of the horse is supposed to really allow for a child to gain the balance and control and coordination and um, to help her her body. And it was also performed by a speech therapist. Um, so she would give her cues and go into a field and up in the woods and um, up and down movements would help her um, in her body yes. um, and the messages to be relayed back with, sometimes she'd say three syllable words, like eight three syllable words on the horse. Um, so she went once a week. Had I taken her three times a week, it probably would have helped a lot more, but it was a half hour away, and so we we did what we could do. Um, we've done things from acupuncture, um, not actual needles, but we've done um, something called Shoni Shin, which is using different metals on different pressure points of the body, and it helped to release toxins from the body. Um, and she also did something called NAET, which is an allergy elimination technique, um, supposed to also eliminate toxins. Um, we've done a lot health-wise yeah. and eating organic as best we can, um, giving her supplements, and um, going to various doctors. Um, yes, from, from reading herbs. her book. Yeah. From reading her book, she was I mean, you tried everything. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to parents? I mean, you, you, I, I was amazed how many things you tried. And, I mean, yeah. do, I mean, you, did you beat yourself up? I mean, I mean, your parent can only yeah. try or do so much. Yeah, what I mean, would, you know, I fall. It's okay to fall. We're human beings. Um, I have something, an excerpt in my book where I was in the shower and I just pounded my fist over and over on the wall, crying hysterically. Um, it's, it's extremely hard to um, accept. It's hard to deal with. Um, and you can't really disconnect from it because you have to wake up in the morning and you, ha you have this real situation to deal with. Yes. And you have to do the best you can with it. Yes. So we also did something called um, umbilical cord stem cells. Mm. So we, sa we saved Sierra's um, stem cells from birth. Um, and we went to Duke University under an apraxia compassionate care study. And um, it was done through an IV in her mm. arm over the course of 15 minutes to a half hour. And um, I did notice um, changes with that oh, and her, her um, yeah, receptively, I, I know, I didn't notice it as much in the apraxia component, um, in the expressive component, but I did notice it in her, um, focusing on her comprehension, um, so regulating her you system mentioned, better. You mentioned the book. Maybe you could say the name again. And where people might find it. Um, sure. I just want to also mention Panama and Stem Cell Clinic is a wonderful clinic that's based in Panama. We went twice, and the doctors are from the States. And I would um, support anyone, or if you want any more information about the Panama Stem Cell Institute, I would be happy to give that information to you. Yes. Yeah. And you could read, maybe you said, parts of the book? Um, sure. Um, one thing I do want to say um, is that the autism rate um, in the state of New Jersey is 1 in 34 um, and 1 in 59 in the United States. Um, 
the new rates in 2019 really haven't been reported, but um, from 2010 to 2014, the rates in the state of New Jersey have gone up 43%. New Jersey um, has the highest number of autistic, um, the autistic population oh. in the country. Oh, thank you. Yes, we'd love oh. to hear some parts of the book. Sure. Um, so, where should I start? <laughs> um, first of all, I could say, um, many of you know what autism is, but I'm just going to share with you, um, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's a developmental neurological disorder. Where does it come from? Toxic exposures and mutations in genes. Um, a variety of reasons. It could be abnormalities in the brain structure of function. And, you know, the children that were labeled with ADD, attention deficit disorder, back in the 1990s now have symptoms more severe in the current year um, in the 2000 millennium babies. And so we have to ask ourselves why. Um, one topic that is very controversial that I just want to touch upon um, is vaccinations. Um, I think that the, um, the number of vaccinations given at a younger age has, um, has skyrocketed and babies um, nervous systems are not developed till they're six to eight months of age. Um, I w I've been very holistic. Um, I have I suffered my own autoimmunity. I got mono at 10 years old, um, had Epstein Barr virus, um, and I feel like so many families have autoimmune diseases in them. So we need to be even more careful about what we put in our bodies. So if we're putting a vaccination in our body with um, toxic chemicals in it, um, such as aluminum. Uh, polysorbate 80, um, live viruses are in some of them. We need to be very careful because I, because of our environment, our water supply, our food supply. I don't think our bodies can handle many of us. I can't speak for all of us um, because our bodies react differently. Um, that um, it, it, there's a response, there's a negative response. Um, right. you know, my daughter's still living, but she's not living the life that I thought she would live. And so what I'm doing is unraveling <laughs> everything I can, um, which is why I wrote the book. It sounds like you've, you've covered, you've done all everything in the world to make sure your daughter's okay. And... Would you say to parents not to beat themselves up? Um, I would say it's okay to beat yourself up oh. sometimes because it's a difficult issue. True. But um, it's hard as a mother not to have guilt, um, not to blame yourself because it's your child. Um, and you hope that you bring in a child that's vibrant and healthy and quote, you know, normal. And, you know, there's already challenges in life and, you know, there, there's bullying um, yes. and other things that, you know, that happen, exactly. you know. But whereas people, you know, parents talk about what college their child is going to, um, <laughs> I just think, will my daughter be independent? And will she live a fulfilling life and get her needs met? Yes, and I imagine your past also has mm -hmm. helped a lot. Maybe you c quickly talk about your past, your edu um, training, and yeah, how um, that's helped. So um, prior to Sierra, I worked with special needs children. I, um, I just, I always had a heart for those that are a little bit different. 
I think I'm a little different. So, so I just, I appreciate differences and I think that's what makes um, our world unique um, and more colorful. Um, so um, I have my undergrad in elementary education and then I went on and got um, my certification in art and special education. I always loved art. My mm -hmm. grandfather was a beautiful artist that I have some nice memories of doing art with him as a young girl. Um, I do my own artwork. Um, and because I was so passionate about art and um, I wanted to support other people um, in the art process. More nice. than art teaching, I was more interested in the therapeutic process of art. Um, because I was so interested in psychology and the well-being of people. Yes, I imagine that education for you mm -hmm. has played a big role in Sierra's life. What have you learned, though? Are um, there any things you've learned? Yeah, um, I talk about, there's a little boy that I, that I worked with um, who was in a wheelchair, and... He had multiple challenges, um, and he touched me in such a way that I vividly remember this one time that I had worked with him. Um, if I could find it. Um, anyway, I would just share with you that I... Um, his father just really wanted me to connect with him. And so he was, you know, people use the word stimming. So that repetitious movement of stimming, we were utilizing um, tissue paper. And he took this tissue paper over weeks. He would do this, and I would do the same movement. He had thick glasses on and um, beautiful blue eyes. And then I, I you know, I went and I tried different paces and different directionalities. And finally, one Saturday, I, um, my piece of tissue paper touched his, and he looked directly at me. And his father um, was just so thrilled. And the little boy, um, he was making, you know, gleeing sounds. And the father didn't care what the project was. Um, he just really wanted him to be able to self-regulate and, and connect with another person. Yes. So I imagine this this give and take with people mm -hmm. really, if Sierra and you, plays a huge role. And yeah. I mean, people to people. What? People? People to people. People to people. Plays a huge yeah. role. Right. And well, you know, Connecting yes. with someone is a powerful. Oh, it is. It's a powerful thing, and without people and you know socialization, it would be very lonely. Yes. So. So yeah. I was awesome. So I thank you for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> people to people. Right? Yes, people to people. Yes. <laughs> oh, before we end, maybe you could speak about dreams. Dreams? Your dreams, Sierra's dreams. She, does she have any dreams that you can detect? Um, I've had dreams about Sierra, and I've had friends that have had dreams about Sierra. Yes. Um, I just recently had a dream that Sierra was um, speaking fluidly in my dream. Um, and I do believe she speaks to me every day. Um, sometimes with the apraxia, she might say a full sentence and I won't hear it again. Sometimes she'll say a single word or a couple of words. Um, when she left the speech therapist um, the other week, um, we have a very special speech therapist named Joanne that we go to, um, Joanne Hinchman Gouffre. Um, she... Um, she ran out of there saying, I like to run. <laughs> and she ran down the hallway. Oh, so, that's great. yeah. So, when Sierra is in her space 
and she's trusting somebody and she's feeling like she can regulate her body, there's actually an approach called DIR, floor time, um, which you can look up. It's really a social emotional um, based um, th therapy. Um, there, there's a big divide between that and something called applied behavioral analysis, but um, floor time to me, DIR floor time, which is a developmental, uh, individualized relationship-based therapy, really works on um, acknowledging the differences, and it's not so much task-related um, yeah. and isolated tasks, but it's more finding out what the child is interested in and um, building on that and not yes. to extinguish behaviors or, um, you know, be compliant, but right. to learn what, um, where the child is at. Yeah, with them. I, I know you haven't been thrilled with all the therapists. What would you share with parents who don't <laughs> mention names? But oh no! What would you... All the names in my book have been changed. So yeah. I'm okay. What would yeah. you say to parents mm -hmm. who aren't thrilled with what's going on and how to? Yeah. Do some. Do something. Say something to their therapist. Um, I think it's really important that we all have a voice and. Um, you know, to articulate and to be confident and to be understanding and know that maybe other people aren't always intentionally doing something to wrong you, but they might not understand. So um, it's, us, it's up to us as parents to educate the teachers as much as it is for the teachers to educate us. And it's really important to work as a team um, I've been in team meetings, unfortunately, where I felt like the outcast, and it was the team against me, the lemon, you know, just the lemon. But, um, but as they got to know me, and as I, you know, was appreciative of what they're doing, um, they, you know, we've come together more as a team, um, because I think people, most people are doing things, um, to help support True. Um, Sierra and other children, I like to believe. Yes. Um, and, you know, we go back to our families, and some of us have big families, and maybe teachers have their own child with special needs. So balancing time is sometimes hard, you know. Right. I think we have a few more minutes, and I'd like you to speak about family, either, you know, family sure. and friends. Have they, what, have they played a role? Um, I met a friend, um, a very close friend now, back when Sierra was in the um, parent-child program. And um, we've become really good buddies. Um, we help support each other. She has taught me a lot. Um, and I like to think I taught her <laughs> a lot. Um, so she's a go-to person for me. Um, I also have another um, very spiritual friend who, um, you know, she's always lifting me up with positive messages telling me how awesome I am. <laughs> and so that's, you know, that's, that's important to have a friend like that that believes in you and believes in your gifts. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, if you have... W two good friends, you know, that's enough, or one very good friend um, that really understands you. So I have I have a core group of friends that are there. Um, as far as my daughter, um, she met a very special little girl um, when she was in her other school that she was in for three years, um, a public school. And um, they just have really good chemistry. Um, she's very social, very sweet. Um, I had a birthday party for Sierra. It was her first real birthday party with other children um, when she turned eight. And um, this little girl showed up with her parents. And I, I said, thank you so much for being such a good friend to Sierra. And yes. she went like this. Sierra, um, good friend to me. Yes. And I will carry that with me for the rest of my life. Yes. So, and I yeah. know... Your 
your parents mm -hmm. played a big role in your husband, mm -hmm. maybe by no world yeah. going to end soon. Um, the yeah, importance briefly. Of that. Um, my husband is a very devoted and dedicated father and husband. Um, he's definitely been there for Sierra as much as he has been there for me. Um, you know, balancing our time is very hard. We have a very small family, and um, we work well together as a team to help support Sierra. My parents um, live a, f a couple hours away, um, and they come every three to four weeks, so it's nice to have them there. And then my mother-in-law is here now, but she lives in Florida. Um, so, yes, you know. Grateful yeah. for the oh. small family we have. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. And before we end, maybe you could speak about where people could find this book. Maybe um, is it online or? So, um, yeah, I have a lot of tabs in my book. I was going to read some excerpts, but time goes by hmm. fast sometimes. <laughs> so um, I was actually saying a little earlier that, you know, people before I, I end, that people say, you know, it's going by so fast, I can't believe my son, daughter is already eight or nine, and for me, it doesn't go by so fast. You know, I, I would love to keep Sierra at three years old. <laughs> if I could, just so to give her more time, you know, to catch up, but then I tell myself that she's perfect right where she's at, and, um, She's a go-getter, and mm. she's a beautiful child, and wherever she's at. Oh, and she, I, we don't give up. That's so, great info. Um, so, Lemon, you could find my book um, on Amazon. Um, and um, there are some reviews, um, one from uh, her speech therapist that offered to sit on in on any workshop <laughs> or conference. Um, for a speech because she thought it was so powerful in the social emotional context of supporting our children. And um, also a, a college um, might be using as a book study mm -hmm. um, to help um, educate the students in the class what it is like for from a parent's perspective in working with a That's child awesome. with special needs. Excellent. Yeah. Well, morning Lee Greenwald. Schwartz. Well, <laughs> yeah. Morning, Lee No, Greenwald. you're right. Yes, that's my maiden name I, is Greenwald, and I like to use my last name because it mean means green woods. Actually, Marnie means joyous, Lee means poet, and Greenwald means green woods. So it's the joyous poet in the green woods because I like to yes. write. Yes. <laughs> and you, you've been a joy to interview. Oh, thank you so much. I really Great appreciate meeting it. meeting you. Great and, meeting you too. And I really hope to. Spread this, you know, locally or nationally. It's well, you're a, helping me. It's, yeah, it's a very right. fine book. Well, everyone, this has been Marnie Lee Schwartz Greenwald on Dialogues <laughs> with Dan. Yes. Have yourselves a great night. Everyone, peace. Good night. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio dot com.